Okay, thank you. That brings us to public comment for items that are not on the agenda. Is there any public comment for Excuse items me, not on uh, President Austin? I was wondering before we again if uh, legal counsel and President Austin could address some concerns related to the legality of the special meeting. I couldn't I couldn't hear the whole question. She has concerns. I, I, I wonder if Legal counsel and President Austin could redress, address some concerns about the legality of this special meeting. Um, I, I'll, I'll tell you what the concerns Please. are. Um, first, uh, President Austin, I believe you called this meeting. So, can you address why you believe the items on the agenda need to be addressed at a special meeting rather than at our next regular scheduled meeting? Thanks, Vice President. Why call the meeting? Per the bylaws, I believe the president or a majority of the board can call yeah. a special meeting. Okay, well, it's, 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 I, it's, it's my understanding that the president in coordination with the vice president and the general manager called the special meeting, so yes, I don't know anything otherwise. Okay, and then the <coughs> question is why a special meeting? And why do these that. items wait until a general meeting? I can answer that. Uh, it was my concern when, when you finally raised the issue how we vote on items that I felt that had to be decided before we could move on to any other business of this board. If, if we don't know whether we have to have a roll call vote or just a general vote, that has to be considered and that just determination has to be made before we ever have another meeting, was my feeling and that's why I pressed for the meeting. And then why is, that, is this meeting not on only that issue? Well, because I'd already requested the other issues. But if those issues could be heard at a regular meeting where there's a greater opportunity for public notice and public input, um, there's no need to do it on a semi-emergency basis at a special meeting. Well, I think this meeting has been, everything's been done legally according to all. <coughs> the, the meeting has been properly noticed. Right. Um, and so the public has been afforded uh, the opportunity for a special meeting and noticing has been uh, done 24 hours in advance as required by the Brown Act. So, um, as, as long as the meeting is properly called by the president, the vice president, the general manager, which is my understanding, um, I don't see any reason why the meeting is in violation of the Brown Act. Um, is there any reason that this meeting was noticed not in accordance with uh, past practices of the board? I noticed on the OCSD website in the past when there's been a special meeting, there's been a banner at the top of the screen saying special meeting. If you go to the website right now, there's nothing to indicate that there's a special meeting and it's not listed on the calendar. That has not been a past practice. The agenda says notice the special meeting. I didn't. Okay. As far as I know, the meeting was properly noticed. So if the board wants to carry on a special meeting, I think. It's appropriate. <coughs> I think there's confusion here as to why we're having a special meeting. And even though it was noticed, right. I'm like confused too. So can you? We're going to get into the agenda. There, there's an there's an additional expense of all our stipends uh, to have a special meeting, as well as public input is more limited because there's a 24 hour notice. It was scheduled during the middle of a work day, which makes it difficult for working people to get here. We have more people here than we've had in a meeting in a long, long time. And, and that's, that's due to public outreach. Um, it should not be up to individual board members or community associations to attract the notice of the public to a meeting called by the OCSD. The OCSD should be providing that notice. Um, also, the OCSD did not provide for any recording of this meeting. So, in my view, uh, the meeting is being done as secretly as possible without actually violating the tenets of the open meetings law. I have that concern. That's, that's not, that's not, it's not done in secret, obviously. Um, and we are recording the meeting, correct? We do, we do record the meeting. I, did it. Uh, I, did I was it told by AGP. email that AGP wouldn't be here. I was not told there would be any recording at all. In the past, a special meeting has been recorded based off board direction. Well, let's move forward, please. Okay, so, yes. 
I'll again ask for public comment for items not on the agenda. Thank you. Good morning, board. My name is Jeff Edwards, and I, I wanted to make mention of a meeting that's coming up. Uh, you may have already been, uh, received notice, but I wanted to make sure uh, it was widely known. And that's in connection with the Oceano Dune State Vehicular Recreation Area and its public works plan that's being crafted now. The public works plan is intended to be a blueprint for the off-highway vehicle park to operate over the next 20 plus years. The public works plan is a creature of the California Coastal Commission. And so I think it's critically important that this community and, and this board be involved in that process. Uh, there have been a number of meetings already, a scoping meeting and what have you. Uh, the next meeting is Monday, February 11th uh, at 5.30 p.m. and it will go for a couple hours. It's in Pismo Beach uh, at 2241 Price Street. It's the Seacrest Oceanfront Hotel. Um, there'll be draft concepts of the Public Works Plan available to review. Again, uh, State Parks has hired an independent consultant to prepare this Public Works Plan. And again, it has far-reaching implications for Oceano. Most notably is the entrance to the park at Pier Avenue. And it appears that this public works plan is not going to make any substantive changes to the way the park is accessed uh, for the majority of visitors. Uh, I don't need to go into the details of the impacts at Pier Avenue. They're substantial. And the concern is that Pier Avenue will become the primary access to the ODSERA for the foreseeable future. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Julie Tacker, and I'm going to take you back to the question that was raised a few minutes ago about having a special meeting. I do appreciate that a lot of people are here today, and um, I find it a little curious that the, the recording today is only by some board direction. I don't know how that happens when you didn't talk about it at your last meeting, but that should be a practice and perhaps fold it into some bylaws in the future that there are audio tapes of all meetings, committee meetings, whatever meetings. Um, it's not that difficult to use a digital uh, recorder. Um, Director Replogel mentioned the cost associated with a special meeting. I hear this, not just here, I read, I learn about Oceano and the resounding sentiment is that you are a disadvantaged community, that you have, are having difficulty covering the cost of your fire services. You have difficulty implementing infrastructure improvements <coughs> due to the disadvantaged community that you are. There's no doubt, but today you are recklessly throwing away money. There's $500 with your five stipends alone. Mr. Minnery's time, uh, Carrie's time away from the desk, away from her desk doing her daily duties is a cost to this district. These, not one of these things on today's agenda could not be heard at a future agenda at any other time. Absolutely no need for this <coughs> reckless spending. Not to mention, the time of the people behind you, in front of, behind me, in front of you. We took time off work. People have busy lives and schedules. All of that comes at their cost. So I want you to consider that when you have a special meeting again, that it better be special. And your explanation is why all of it could have waited to a future agenda. So I, again, I, I believe your spending today is reckless for your community. Point, point of order, Madam Chair. I received zero stipend. I have had um, collected a stipend since I've been on this board. I couldn't hear you. I have not received a stipend no, since I've been yeah. appointed to this position. So I want to make that clear. <clears throat> You know, my, my name is Lucia. My dear friends and representatives,
Hamza, uh, the best way to help me and those who can't hear is that you speak louder. This is a public meeting, so please uh, use your public speaking skills. <laughs> Look at people and speak with the loud voice. This is not just a chatting a conversation because I can't hear a lot of what you say. Um, <clears throat> Um, I'm also disturbed, by the way, this meeting has come about. Uh, all these people, you know, uh, Austin, you're right, there are more people here than on regular meetings, and that's because this meeting stinks. <laughs> that's why, that should tell you something. It stinks to a lot of people. So, and we did, I didn't learn it from, from any effort you have made to let me know. I live just a few blocks away. I learned it from my outreach and my activists and my grassroots organization, because I don't click on your, on your website every day to find out about special meetings. I just was sincerely uh, that it would happen uh, when the date says it would happen. So this is to be completely by surprise. And it is true, it's not a very convenient time uh, for the public to give you input. And uh, as I say, you know, friends and my representatives, I voted for you, I trust uh, they do the best thing for our community. Um, it seems to me that, uh, <clears throat> um, again, uh, there is no special, there is no notable special meeting on your homepage, uh, there is, uh, it's not on your calendar, and it's hidden, buried in a little place where one has to click on a current meeting agenda to find about this meeting. But, but the, the meeting agenda, the current meeting that I thought of was going to be on, on, on the 13th. So it was very difficult for me even to find out about uh, the agenda. Um, besides, uh, um, the changes that you want to make, uh, it seems to me that you want to change the bylaws so that uh, uh, it's going to make it harder for people to come because you want to uh, that you want to decide to that you can meet any time you want without taking taking away the okay and the time. So. I think the changes to the bylaws are not good, and the committees, there is nothing wrong with the people you have assigned to the, community, the committees as they are. Why not leave them the way they are? Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning, Mary Lucy Oceano. Um, I actually like the early meetings, but that's my personal opinion. And, and maybe that's something the board can discuss, is that maybe um, when the meetings are held, you know, maybe there's one in the morning and one in the afternoon. I mean, one in the evening. I bet maybe it's something that the board can, can look at, because I do look at a lot of people who would prefer to have a board meeting uh, during the day as well as <coughs> And, uh, you know, any board member can put a call for a special meeting. And if you have the support of the majority of your board, then that special meeting moves forward. So any director can do that um, if they choose. Um, historically, I used to not be able to speak from a historical perspective, but, you know, I've been here long enough now where I, or whether it was, you know, another person from the front. The board meetings are always recorded. That's how you get accurate minutes from the recordings. Mm -hmm. And um, and just from the comments I've seen regarding disadvantaged, you know, maybe we need to go back and do another tutorial on why what this means for the community of Oceano. It's not just a, a label, which, you know, we all are very freaky about labels, right? But this one actually has a, a value for every single person in this town. So, thanks. Anybody else? Patricia Price. I'm here because um, I really um, want transparency in government. And this meeting reeks of cover-up to me. I didn't hear about it uh, until very, very recently. Um, and what is on the agenda doesn't seem to be anything that couldn't be addressed at a regular meeting, a regular evening meeting where the public, uh, the working public, can come to <coughs> the meetings and be a part of this. This doesn't look transparent. This looks sneaky and underhanded. 
And I know that you don't want to look that way, board. Um, it's, it's not a good look. Thank you. Hi, Brenda Lowe, Oceana resident, great figure. Um, <clears throat> I also came upon this accidentally by trolling uh, Facebook and seeing an announcement, and um, I've been trying to make most of your meetings to, to understand better. And one of the things that I didn't understand, and it's probably because I just didn't know enough when you discussed it at the meeting, was that some of the committee assignments appear to have final decision-making role and not just advisory. And I had thought that all committee meetings, no, they're not committee meetings like you've appointed a committee. Um, they are outside other agencies, other public agencies. And it appears from the chart on page number six that two assignments, the um, SAM district and the um, fire authority, are final decision-making roles. And I just wanted um, to say, uh, well, first of all, I just realized that this is on the agenda and I shouldn't be speaking now. So if you will fast forward it to when it applies. But if you could speak to that, why some committee assignments, I'm assuming that means the representative, the primary one, not the alternate, will make decisions that are binding. And I didn't know that committees could make binding agreements on behalf of the district. So at some point in the discussion, I'm hoping that that will be clarified for me. Thank you. Charles Barney, uh, president of Oceana. I just have a basic question, and that is if, in fact, the reason for this meeting was to determine whether roll call votes or some other type of vote is what the board needs to operate under, why are there other agenda items on the meeting? And especially um, where it entails redoing um, or possibly redoing committee assignments that were just decided on relatively recently. That's my question. Um, I too want to voice my concern about having a meeting, um, a special meeting, when none of the three items um, on the agenda appear to be really time sensitive. That um, I think they could have waited until your next regular meeting. And also um, the timing of it at you know, 10 o'clock is, um, it really does preclude work the working public and the public in general by the 24 hour notice, particularly when there's nothing time sensitive. Thank you. Brad Snook. Um, I propose that we end this meeting right now. Um, the trust uh, of this board is at stake. Uh, the agenda is not valid. Um, we're moving forward with uh, an issue in Central Coast Blue that is important. Millions of dollars are on the line. Uh, it's important that our community have trust in these boards. And uh, as far as I can see, with everything that's coming forward, uh, this meeting is degrading the trust in this board. If you move forward with it, it could turn out to be uh, something that resonates uh, for months or years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Make a motion. I'll close public comment. There's no other comment. We will move on to item number six, business <coughs> I would like to move that we adjourn this movie and this movie, this meeting, and place all of the items on the agenda at our next regular scheduled meeting. Second. Okay, there's been a motion and a second. We have a point of order. We have no business on the I mean, we have to open the business items, don't we, before we can hold on something? I, I don't know. Or should, should it have come? I think that there's been a motion and a second. Okay. I think your board should discuss the matter and uh, then I would suggest a roll call vote. Um, okay. Okay, so it's been moved, moved and seconded that we adjourn this meeting. Thank you. 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 Thank
place of discussion. Can we speak Would you want to take public comment on that? Yeah. President? We'll take public yes. comment on the yes. motion. Yes. I agree with the motion. I ask that your board uh, vote unanimously for the motion. I thought, as a point of order, the speakers would give their name and where they're from. I'm Jim Caldwell from Oceana. I would like uh, every speaker to identify where they're from. Yes, I think it would be the best thing. I think it would be the best thing for you to do after have listened to a lot of people and caring people that you observe and that you listen to, the, to your public and to your community. And uh, you know, around one west, it's human to make mistakes. Perseverare, diabolic human. But to make them in spite of knowledge, <coughs> that's not a good thing. So please do vote in favor of the motion to adjourn the meeting and the items on the agenda. Thank you. Hi, Brenda Lowe, <coughs> Oceana resident. Um, I would like to uh, have the opportunity in discussion before the vote to hear what the various board members believe why this, why this is important and maybe specifically what the thought is about which particular committee assignments prompted this this decision. I don't know if that's appropriate procedurally, but I don't know how the different members, I've heard comments from um, Director White, Replogle, and Via on it, why they believe um, these committee assignments and these other changes to bylaws are needed at this time, but I would hope to hear from the other board, member, me, board members um, what their, why they have their opinion about it. Thanks. Mary Lucy Oceano, I actually would like to see uh, the meeting go forward. I think it, 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 you know, the whole issue of transparency goes right out the window. It, you call a special meeting on issues that are a little bit different than the typical day-to-day -day operations. You run the risk of ruining your next meeting by by tiptoeing around certain issues. You also run the risk of the damage continuing. You, what you want to do is you want to minimize, slow the damage down, correct it. And you can't do that if you don't have a meeting. So the five of you are here. You, you're not going to run the risk of ruining, you know, sabotaging everyday activities that, that are covered by the board on a regular basis. So I, I strongly encourage you to move forward simply because you want to rectify the issue and then you can move forward. Otherwise, you're just putting it off. I do uh, Chris Victor and Oceano. Um, although that's not a requirement in meetings to identify yourself, I think it's a good idea. Um, but I too recommend that you adjourn and add these to the next regular meeting. I don't know what damage would be occurred if you didn't. I don't see that any of these are really going to be damaging if they aren't dealt with today. And I think really, in, um, and when you're looking at transparency and the trust of uh, your constituents, I think that that would be the best idea. Hi, I'm Christine Canada, Oceana resident. I, I support the adjournment of this meeting as well. I don't think there's anything special that we're discussing today. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, so we'll go back. Board discussion. Any board discussion, discussion on the matter? It's a legally called meeting. We're all here. Obviously, the public knows about the meeting, and I see no purpose in canceling. myself out of a sick bed without a stipend, so I'm ready to move forward. Okay, there's been a motion.
motion and a second. Can we have a roll call? Can we read the motion again? Uh, Director Vogel moved that the meeting shall be adjourned and all the items placed on the next meeting. Director B is next regular meeting. Next regular meeting. So, Director Gibson? No. Director Villa? Yes. Director Replogo? Yes. Pre Vice President White? No. President Boston? No. Okay, so we'll move on now to the business items. Um, So, now, business item A, consideration and discussion of district bylaws section 2.1 and section 2.8 meetings and section 3 committees. So, um, is there any public comment on item I, I would ask that we take public comment after um, introduction of this agenda item to inform the public about the matters. Is there any other the president is able to take public comment after the president's discretion? Thank you. Okay, so consideration and discussion of district bylaws 2.1 and 2.8, section 3 committees. So um, Pablo did his um, manager's report. And I, what it is is there's three, three items on the bylaws that have come into question. Um, during the last few meetings, the last couple of meetings on, on votes that were made. And one was with um, uh, Director Rapogel did not, on an item she did not vote, she voted, didn't vote yes and did not vote no. So uh, she wanted it brought back because it, according to the bylaws, if you don't vote, it's a yes vote. So it was registered as five to zero. And so she wanted that brought back that she did not vote on that. So that's the item that we have on the. <clears throat> on the President Austin, may I clarify that? Okay. Um, this item actually came out because uh, Director Replogo pointed out following our last regular meeting uh, where there was not a roll call vote but a voice vote as to whether or not to bring the committee assignments um, uh, to re for your board to reconsider them. And the uh, director of local pointed out that the bylaws currently state that a roll call vote shall be taken on any vote not passed unanimously. Um, right, she voted no, and it was a four to one, and we put it in the minutes, but it should have been a, wanted it to be a roll call vote. Correct. So, so the reason that uh, <laughs> we're looking at this is that it creates the way the bylaws are currently drafted. It creates confusion because you would have to do if you any voice vote. Did if it's to, to identified through the voice vote that um, one or more of the directors dissented, it would essentially put you in a situation where you have to vote a second time to do a roll call vote. So this is trying to clean up those to follow the pattern of practice in your board, which has been to have uh, voice votes on on matters that are not specifically required in a roll call vote, such as resolutions. Right. So. So we have, and also our regular meeting time. We did not set that in the board of directors. That's another one that's on us. Right, I noticed that when I was changed our looking at the bylaws and then. But we didn't change it in the bylaws. Because the committee, number three, is because this issue of reconsidering committee appointments was not in the bylaws, it seemed like it might be prudent to, to just to put a, 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 an additional provision in the bylaws to address this issue, just to clarify and clean up the issue board's discretion. Okay, so those are the matters at hand. Um, I, I, have, I have a question. And I, I may be, this might be a little nitpicky thing. Um, I wonder if we should take a roll call on every, every, every vote we take. And I know that's excessive, but uh, Lucia has trouble hearing uh, from one end to the, with the heater on especially. From one end of this board to the other, we can't quite always hear. Uh, and I just wonder if that would be, if if that would even make that move further along. And I, I have that same question. It might be a good idea. 
I certainly see <coughs> nothing, uh, no harm in taking roll call votes as a matter of course on everything. So, but that's at the discretion of your board. Currently, you know, certain items like resolutions, um, ordinances, we always take roll call votes on. Any item of a uh, matter of uh, expenditure of $7,500 or more, we take roll call votes on. So it's uh, at the pleasure of your board on certain things like consent, etc. And, and if someone doesn't vote or if they abstain, those are both considered yes votes? Or is that an abstaining and no vote as a nothing vote? The way the, um, the bylaws currently are drafted is that silence or abstention without the identification of a conflict are considered to be uh, yes votes. I, I would agree with having a roll call vote on each item. Uh, it doesn't take that much more time. Uh, the first bylaws revision on here about the meeting times I do not see that that is an issue that needs to be decided at a special meeting. It has no pertinence to the roll call vote issue, and I would suggest that we place this on the regularly scheduled meeting agenda. Uh, that too with the <coughs> revision or the addition of 3.5, as I understand from Vice President White, the reason for the special meeting was solely to address the roll call vote issue in 2.8. I would object to that because while we're here, we need to get some work done. The other the other night, we had a meeting that ran three and a half hours. A regular meeting, three and a half hours. We have a three-hour limit. We had to extend that meeting, and I think while we're here, we might as well get a little bit of work done. You are objecting to the cost of things. Here we go. I'm objecting to the limited public notice and the time of the meeting, which also restricts public access for working people. Fire board meets regularly at 10 a.m. Yeah. On a Friday, yet. So, this board yeah. regularly meets in the right. evening. All right, let's, let's move on. Do you have any comments on that? So, so oh, I, I, I agree with um, having a roll call vote because it just, it's hard for the public to hear or see if you focus on one or two and then you don't know if the other, how the other person voted, if they were just silent. So roll call, I think, is more, makes it all more clear as to who voted what. <laughs> yes, I think the roll call vote avoid, uh, avoids the shoulda, woulda, coulda, which is how we got started here in the first place, I think. So I'm in favor of roll call vote every time. So now, shall we open this to public comment? Or do you want to go through all of them first? Go Okay, so 2.1. Um, on 2.1, on two I have a further comment. We're not going to push that off to okay. uh, a regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, my concern with this is that this could allow a board majority to decide to further limit public access uh, and reduce public involvement in the meetings by choosing to schedule the meeting at a time that's inconvenient for the working public and also inconvenient for minority members of the board or potential members of the board who work regular jobs and can't take off time regularly during the day. Uh, so I see this as an anti- provision and uh, there ought to be a limitation in there that the public interest will be considered and it's not solely at the whim of the board to set the schedule. These meetings have been happening since 1981 and there's never been any board here that had the meetings either at 6.30 or 6 p.m. That's all the standards. You don't hold the meetings. We would never, I mean, I don't I'm saying for myself, I would never try to limit public access or public comment. I, I don't appreciate that comment at all. Well, then would you because, agree with adding uh, some limitation to clarify that the public interest will be considered? And so well, that, that goes without saying. Public interest has always been considered. We don't try to block public interest. 
So, if the regular meeting time shall be set annually pursuant to the current director's schedules and our preference, is the thing you wanted to add? If anybody think, what, now what did you want to say to you? Uh, some language to say that the public interest will be considered in setting the meeting time to maximize the opportunity for public input. Nothing goes without saying in a legal document. You have well, to put true. it in there. Or President also. You're putting words in our that we have we have plans to do things for majority things. I'm right. not saying that. I'm just saying that this language okay. opens up that possibility. Uh, President Austin, maybe uh, I can make a suggestion that it says that uh, we revise this to say regular meetings shall be set annually pursuant to the current director's schedules and or preference with consideration of the public's uh, interest in participation. That's fine. That sounds fine to me. Is that uh, Director of Global? Is that uh, Maximizing the ability of the public to well, yeah. Uh, let, wait a minute. Input. Um, there's also a typo in there. Uh, there should be an apostrophe in directors. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> the maximizing directors are, are elected and they work and you know it, it's gonna it really is set because of the directors' schedules. They're the ones that have to do the work on this on this elected body, and they're the ones who have to be able to get here. And if you go too far, uh, logically most meetings are held at night, in the early evening, and this meeting has been held since it founded in on Wednesday evenings, I believe, and the accommodation we made last year in changing this was for Ms. Popolo because she worked in St. Louis and the understanding she needed to get here and I didn't want her to have an accident on the way. So I think we don't need to get too carried away about this. But yes, I would put the public's, I support the public's, what you said, but and, not. And I did, I did notice this when I was going, looking at the bylaws, following Director Kogel's uh, comments on the other uh, roll call matter. And I recall, I think even last year, <coughs> our meetings were at 5.30, They've been at six. Uh, they've been at six thirty. So it just seemed to be something to to, yeah. to, to clarify. So currently, then, uh, what I have written down is regular meeting time shall be set annually pursuant to the current director's schedules and/or preference, with consideration to the public's right to participate in meetings. Is that sufficient? Okay. Thank yes, you. Thank you. No, I'm I'm going to employ. I work, so it, it's it's a problem for me to come in the mornings too. I'm taking off work myself. You both are. Yeah. Well, and, and three of you are actually. Mm -hmm. So I would, I, I would support that. I, think I would approve that as amended. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, so are, I'm sorry, are we, are we considering all of this? No, the 2.8, the, yeah, we'll do the 2.8, the roll call vote. I think we kind of discussed that already, everybody. Would you prefer to go through all three of them and then take public comment as on the whole? On the committees also? No, okay, let's, let's do it separately. Okay. Separately. Okay, so we'll do, so we've all discussed here that we think a roll call vote is what we are yeah. thinking. And then up here we have our wording for things. So let's hear from the public. Uh, I'm sorry, are we, are we doing 3.5? No. So, no. So, no. So you're just discussing 2.1 2. 2. and 2.8. 2.1 and 2.8, yes. Good morning again. I'm Julie Tacker. And from. it's none of your business. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You're very pleased. Please begin your yeah. to the audience. So <coughs> the Brown Act does not require me even tell you my name. I can participate anonymously from planet Mars at your meetings. So while you have a member of the public who's thirsty or hungry for where I live, it's none of his business. Okay, so I will continue to, if you'll allow. Uh, with regard to 2.1, the uh, 6.30 time that was specified in your bylaws for some many years and months 
brings to mind that perhaps that you have been meeting in violation of your bylaws for quite a while. And I will check, but I also think that violates the Brown Act because you have posted bylaws. And that's the law that your district live by, lives by. So if, I'd like to see you have a time certain every year when you visit your bylaws and, and maybe decide that at a future agenda where the public can participate. <coughs> With regard to 2.8, it looks like the amended language is now no longer valid because of the discussion I heard that you want to take voice votes on everything. This entire bylaw needs to be written because there's reference to a $7,500 expenditure would need voice votes. If all votes are voice votes, then this whole bylaw needs to be rewritten. And I will be back to participate on 3.5. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, we'll move on to the I'd like to make a motion we approve District Bylaw Section 2.1 and Section 2.8 as amended. As amended. Could, could we have those amendments read back, please? Um, two point, you, you want me to read the amendments back? Okay, yeah, so what, what, as, what are we voting to approve? That's what I'm, I'm trying to clarify too. Um, so. 2.1 was regular meeting times shall be set annually pursuant to the current director's schedules and or preferences with consideration to the public's right to participate in meetings. Okay, uh, the way 2.8 is currently revised. Uh, hang, hang on a second. Okay. I don't think you need that second meeting in that sentence. Well, we're nitpicking here. Okay. With the public's right to participate, period. Perfect. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, the second uh, matter of 2.8 permits voice votes um, with, without a roll call other than as specifically required for ordinances and resolutions and matters over $7,500. And so what I'm unclear is, is whether or not your board wants to revise that to simply say a roll call vote should be taken on all uh, business items. And so do you, my question, and to your board for discussion is, do you want it to be on roll call on all business items and then allow consent items to be at voice votes? Or I just want to be All clear. items, even consent? Yeah. We, we have, like, sometimes we get discussion on consent just as well as and differences of opinion on consent on money spending. Especially well, in that instance, wouldn't it have been hold off consent for discussion? But it would still be under consent. So we listed under consent. If it's pulled off for discussion, then we would make to make it a roll call vote, right? Not necessarily. Not unless you say something. Speak up. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was just saying if it's taken off consent agenda and we discuss it, we could say we'll do a roll call vote on this item. At your but board's do, discretion, how you want to do We can do this. voice vote on the other items. So we have three A, B, C consent. We can pull C. We voice vote A and B and roll call C. We can do that. You can do that. I just want to know what the preference of the board is. So I believe um, that we should be. It should be a voice vote on every single item. Roll call. Roll call. Roll, roll call. Um, to avoid confusion <laughs> for everything. It, it's hard. I've been like in the public and you just hear like yes and you know sometimes you're not sure if the other person was just silent or voted and you're like okay. Sometimes I, you know if you're hard of hearing you don't it's just better if it's a voice call. I don't think it's that big of a deal. I would agree with the Okay, then, then we have a motion on 2.8. So, so 2.8 will be completely revised to specify yeah. that then. So we need to confirm. <laughs> what 
I would suggest on 2.8 is that um, you allow me to revise it <coughs> and bring it back uh, to the board on a consent calendar for your review so you know exactly what it is, okay. the language that you're approving. So well, if, if we are not actually finalizing this at this meeting, can we proceed with the meeting? Given that it was called specifically to clarify that point on the bylaws. Well, we can still act on the bylaws we have. Well, you can make the determination to, to say all items have to be determined on a roll call vote and make that determination now and then just have me bring this back to approve the actual language of it. But so, the board's discretion. You said that the board want to give direction to make all items roll call on the agenda. Yes, that's what we're saying. Yes. So, does someone want to make a motion for that? No, we're, we're amending it. Right. We, we've got a motion on the floor. A motion on the floor to amend. Okay, what well, did you make the motion? I got lost here. Yeah, I made the motion. You made the Can motion. Wait, made the motion. To and I'll amend my motion to say. Uh, roll call votes shall be taken on the passage of all business items before the board. Okay, well, there's business. And I can add to that that uh, uh, roll call votes shall be entered into the minutes of the board meeting showing the board members voting aye, those voting no, and those not voting the, or absent. Unless the board member states that he or she is not voting on an item because of a conflict of interest, his or her silence or abstinence shall be deemed and recorded as an affirmative vote. Is my amendment? Is that, is that, do we have to yes. revise it anymore? No, that's it. Okay. <coughs> so we have a second on that. Please. Second. Okay. Shall we do a roll call vote? Yes. You got to speak up. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> roll call vote. Director Gibson. Okay. Yes. yes. Director Bia. Yes. Director Rapolo. Yes. Vice President White. Yes. President Austin. Yes. Okay. Public comment or did you approve? We're voting. Do you think you did? Do you, do you took public comment? Yeah, gotcha. So you have uh, 3.5. Okay, so our next item on the agenda is. Excuse me, I have not voted. I don't take um, direction from the audience. President Austin, as an initial matter, would you please enlighten the members of the public and those of us on the board who are in the dark as to why committee assignments need to be revisited only one month after they were set? This is something that's come up and um, it will be brought up in the meeting. We're all going to speak up, right? We're on it now. Yes. We're, we're talking about making this change so that we can revise committee assignments since proposed to that's what do we're that doing right now. So, so I would like to know the reason for re revisiting committee assignments when they were only set last month. This is what we're here for. Uh, yes, that's that's could, could you answer sure. the question? I don't have an answer. The question is coming up in the agenda, right? I don't think. Well, so. I, I, I think actually at this point we're looking just specifically at whether or not your board desires to amend uh, section three of the bylaws to, oh, right. to, to specifically address the issue about um, uh, reconsideration of committee assignments. It was not in the bylaws before, so it seemed prudent to discuss whether or not you want to just make that a very clear point. Well, um, I, can, I can say the reason for that is because when I made the motion, we discovered that it wasn't in the bylaws, so we have to change the bylaws so we can go back to the action I pursued to begin with. Right, and I have no, there's no reason why your board couldn't do it by um, by board majority. The question was really, was it a roll call vote required or not? And we're just not there yet on the agenda. I think that's the next yeah. item, so. Yeah. Well, Mr. Minnery, can I ask you, uh, how do other similar bodies, other CSDs, uh, deal with committee assignments? Do they, do they have provisions in their bylaws that they can be revisited at any time for any reason, as this is proposed? Um, different agencies deal with committees in different ways. Um, 
and, and some have standing committees. Uh, your, your board has a board of two an approach to have uh, committees based on particular issues, uh, platform-based committees. So certainly it is within uh, the board's discretion to revisit committees if the board majority determines to do so. And I would say historically that committees have been changed during the year after they were signed for a variety of different reasons. Uh, and what are those past. reasons? People didn't want to serve on them. Uh, people left the board. There was conflicts arising between them. There's your answer. That's just... Uh, I have a question. Um, don't we all on the board serve at the pleasure of the rest of the board? It's not up to staff or the general manager or anyone else. To? That we serve on committees. That is at the pleasure of the rest of the board. Yes, your board determines right. committees as a whole. Correct. Yes. So if, if, if we want changes made, then that is up to the board for to make that. It's certainly within your prerogative as a board to discuss committee assignments. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So it's up to the board, so we're going to be given reasons as to why, or can the board just, you know, vote without giving any reason why? There should be reasons, right? Yeah, that's a part of your discussion process as a body of elected officials. As this provision is written, it is too broad. Uh, a board majority could, for any reason, come back at any time and remove a minority board member with whom they disagree or have a personal issue or for no reason whatsoever. Uh, and that is, that is not in the best interest of the community and serving the people of Oceania. <coughs> I too believe that there should be limitations on this, specifying that it will not be revisited unless there is some good reason to revisit it, such as um, a member finds that they have unforeseen time conflicts, so they cannot serve, or they have to deal with an illness, or they are not fulfilling their duties um, as a representative on the committee. But I do not think it should be completely open-ended like this so that the board majority can make changes at any time for any reason or no reason. Okay, so just so I'm clear, Director Paul is, I believe, saying that she wants some sort of provisions related to good cause for committee reassignments or reconsiderations. Exactly. any 
dissenting opinion. And the unfortunate part is the three directors I mentioned are buying at hook, line, and sinker. You might as well be working for Pismo Beach. Thank you. Jim Caldwell, Oceano. There is one board of directors for the Oceano Community Services District. Each director pledges, promises to work for the common good. There should be some disagreement among directors. That's why we have discussion. And people can change their mind and their position. And hopefully that happens. <clears throat> One individual director may not control the entire board. So if the majority of the board makes a decision using proper voting as we've beaten into the ground this morning uh, by a voice vote or uh, a roll call vote, the majority makes the decision. It has to move forward in an organized fashion, and that's what the organized fashion is. Um, outlandish accusations of board, individual board directors working for the city of Pismo, it has no place here. It is totally inappropriate. It's shameful. And I say you, the individual directors of this board, have more of an obligation to the residents of Oceano than you do to the community of San Luis Obispo County or Los Osos or other areas where people come in and make outlandish claims that are just silly. I was going to say stupid, but I'm not. Um, this, this is really unfortunate. And hopefully, uh, this uh, Oceano Community Services District Board can move forward without the acrimony that's developing in the last few months. Julie Tacker and Helen's <coughs> point is very well taken. And then, so that raises the question, why would you need to change anything? You've made your assignments, nothing has happened, and there's no need to change anybody's assignment unless they've requested to somehow change or have some conflict that they don't want to observe. Specifically to item 3.5, the language here says that uh, the district appointments shall be determined in January of each year. My concern with that is that January is too late. Once the election takes place in November, it's certified at the end of the month, business needs to be done at the sanitation district and at the fire authority, among your other committees that you're assigned to, and that's December. Five Cities Fire Authority had to cancel its December meeting because it didn't have a quorum because the city of Arroyo Grande and the city of Grover Beach had not assigned uh, new representatives paralyzing the fire authority from doing its business for the month of December. <coughs> Uh, South San Luis Obispo County Sanitation <coughs> District could find itself in the same position. So I think December, January is too late. So I'd like you to look at this language and maybe take the specificity out of it and and go with some uh, appointments that are as, as necessary or as early as possible or whatever it is. Um, but you, you choose the language, but I think January is too late. <coughs> Excuse me, Brenda Lowe, Oceano uh, resident. I also agree with the comment I heard about that it's a majority vote, majority rules on, um, on most of these issues, if not all. So I still echo my first, my question a while ago is, is there some kind of code or requirement that makes 
the representative on the sand board and the fire authority have a final decision making role because that's not a majority. What if one member of the board has an opinion? What are they making final decisions about? I just don't understand that part. Could Mr. Minnery, could you hang on a second? Could you explain how those or, or I can try to answer that query yeah, about you the like to otherwise the fire I authority in the sand Would you like to chime in you? Or, I, can, I can try and you can correct me when I'm sure. wrong. Um, the I take the fire board because I'm on the fire board. The member gets consults with the entire board and then speaks for the entire board. It's a joint powers agreement between the three organizations. The sanitation board is a separate entity to which legally the mayor of the two communities and the president of this board are assigned as the as the functional board and they do serve independently. Is that pretty close? Yes. Does that satisfy everybody? Okay. No. Um. I'd like to take it back to the bylaw that, that drives, you know, that we do committee appointments and all that underneath, okay? Yeah. Because I think that's what's on the agenda right now, yeah. is how that's wording. And so, um, when I sat on the board, um, uh, Mr. There was, oh yeah, <laughs> Mr. Jim Hill decided he didn't like me, right? And what he did is he stripped me of my committee assignments. And there was no reason why, you know, and um, he did offer me street lighting, you know. And so the reality is it's about personalities. And it always comes down to personalities. So Cynthia wants some kind of scale, definition. Um, where do we, what do we do? Do we do like a scale that says, um, this behavior or this personality trait that we don't like is is at the strong end, you know, like kind of like a pain management scale that goes from one to ten, you know, like what degree of pain are you really in, you know, it it, it doesn't make sense. It's censorship. I I, I have to tell you. Um, also, too, is that maybe you want the committee assignments to come back up because you think, you kind of feel like maybe there's another agenda being ran and it's not the agenda of this body. You know, I'm just saying, where does that fit on in your definition of going back and visiting committee assignments? You can't do it. You have to trust. And that's why you have to go back to your bylaws. And trust me, I could have changed the bylaws. The, to box Mr. Hill from stripping other people's, retaliating against people, but I didn't because I thought that that bylaw was inclusive of all, no matter what your opinion is. <coughs> you know, either you're going to get penalized or you're not. Okay, so um, my issue is you, you, I need this body to work as a coalition. I, I don't need you to work arbitrarily by yourself. That doesn't help anybody. And the lack of communication will destroy you. And I'm one of those directors that came in after this organization had been beat down, you know, and, and trying to destroy, you know, the organization. So um, I don't want to see that again. I don't like the divide and conquer. And so if you can capture all those personality traits in a bylaw, good luck. Charles Barney Oceano. Um, I'm a little confused, <coughs> and it has to do with the authority of the OCSD representative on the sanitation district. What I heard was that they have unilateral authority to vote however they want to without any accountability back to the board. 
If that is the case, I think that is a serious flaw. No representative of this community services district should be voting on behalf of the district without the explicit authority and endorsement of the district. And if that's the way the sanitation district works, no wonder there's so much problems because there's no accountability back to its uh, authoritative body. And if, if I misheard that, and that is not the case, I'd like to understand that. Um, and if in fact the representative is accountable to the district, then I think that is provision enough for protecting the public well-being that they're not going to be voting in any, on any position that does not have the endorsement of at least the majority of the district directors. Mr. Minnery, can you address that issue? Yeah, please. Um, I think it is, a, uh, it is a valid point. The members of the sanitation district and, as, and, and same with the five city fire authority is a representative of the Oceano Community Services District as a representative <laughs> entity on that particular board. And uh, for example, your board has, um, when knowing certain uh, things have, are coming up related to the sanitation district or five city fire, your board has directed your representative to, um, to, to uh, vote or act in a particular way that represents your district. So there is accountability to, the, to the, your board as a whole because that particular whoever is the representative represents your community. Thank you. I'm Dale Esposito and I've been in Ocean for over 40 years. I've come to many of these meetings. My husband was on the board several times. I just want to tell the board I wish they would only listen to the Oceano people. The outsiders, I don't understand why they're coming in and trying to tell us how to run our little community. We all love it. We're going through a hard time right now, losing a dear friend of ours. And it's not the right time to argue, but I just ask you to please put Oceano and listen to them first. Thank you. I'm Joe Sharker, resident of Oceano. Thank you for being here today. I infrequently come here to meetings. Usually every time I come, I go home and say, why did I even come? This is almost one of those times. I want to stay informed. Something that just came to mind, though, was you always hear the word transparency is what everybody wants. This isn't transparency. This is some sort of battle. I'd like to know what brought up this. And the only thing I can gather now is something about the sand district and who's representing us in the sand district and how much power they have. Do we have to re we have rely on rumors of why we're here? Can't we have some transparency and air out all your laundry in front of us? What's going on here? There's a lot of people, probably like me, I hope not too many like me, but don't come here because they see this fiasco. I'm sorry to say that. <coughs> 10 after 11. It took us a half hour to figure what, but that first half hour went. Oh my goodness, to sit there and watch. I kept saying to myself, don't get up there, Joe, don't get up there. This is ridiculous. Iron out, show your dirty laundry in front of us. What's going on? Why is it because of the, what brought on this fiasco about who's the power of somebody at our sand district representative? Can you tell us what brought this up? That's what we're here for. We're not here for back and forth in a three to two vote or whatever it is that's going to end up in. Is this a battle that's going on in general? Is this going to happen on everything that comes up? Somebody mentions that something like the Board of Supervisors is not getting anywhere. Is that where this is going to be permanently? I'd like to see some progress on transparency on what's going on. Tell us why you disagree. Tell us why we're here. Thank you.
Christy Tolino Chiano. And I would like to clarify, and perhaps the council can too, that um, these meetings are open to the public and they're open to all public input. Um, the Brown Act requires that and for the board to prioritize or only listen to Oceano excuse me, residents would go against the legislative intent of that act. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? <coughs> Brad Snook. Um, I'm the chair of our County Chapter Surfrider Foundation. <coughs> I give uh, comments to this board and other boards uh, related to the sanitation district and uh, other boards all over the county regularly. Um, uh, Director of Local is someone I'm familiar with. Uh, she's an engineer. Um, uh, she has a law degree. Uh, she has many points. She has many good points for you and uh, many valuable assets to bring to uh, Oceano as well, and also to our county. Um, I've seen her in action. She's brought many, many valuable points uh, to us in Surfrider, and uh, she works in the group. I think the, the board would do well to integrate her better into your level of understanding of uh, where she wants to bring the board and some of the hard questions she's asking. Uh, Tuesday meeting and uh, last Tuesday's meeting in Pismo Beach, which has been brought up. Uh, the uh, director of local, in her own uh, in her own time, representing the Oceano Beach Community Association, made some points about uh, about uh, the uh, water recycling uh, uh, Central Coast Blue project. Those are points that should be uh, taken to heart and should be evaluated. Um, it will allow the project to be better in the long run. If we take in those, all, the, all those points, they might be hard to hear. They might be, uh, you know, maybe the wrong voice delivered them, but they're valuable points. Those points will save us from a uh, 218 protest vote in the long run. If this board votes to put the water recycling equipment that site in the sanitation district existing site, our board, our surf rider chapter will support the protest vote to stop that bad project. So here we are where we need to do a better job listening, what they're asking, we need to do a better job defining so that people understand why we're here, and we need to do a better job using the information available to go forward. I appreciate the board that uh, more allowance uh, <coughs> for uh, direct, director, what director Replo is bringing to the board, and that will help us all. Thank you. President White, I, just as a point of clarification, um, oh, I'm sorry, President Austin, sorry, I have it. Um, <coughs> President Austin, I just want to make a point of clarification that right now what your board is considering is this addition to uh, Section 3, just in committee, um, uh, the reconsideration of committee assignments. Your board naturally, just by its inherent nature, has the ability to reconsider committee assignments anyway, but um, uh, this suggested modification was just to clarify the bylaws on this specific issue. Um, your board does have the power to do this as a matter of course anyway, so I just want to kind of bring it back to uh, what we're so looking at here. There's any more comment? <coughs> Seeing that, then we'll bring it back. And, um, <coughs> I would suggest that we amend the proposed language to specify that the committee assignment and district appointments will be will, not shall, will be determined uh, at the first regular meeting following the certification of election results. <coughs> or the first, there's no election. Well, there's an election every year, right? No, so every two years. Every two years, yeah, every two years. So I guess it would be December in the off years? Um, or don't you consider it annually? Don't you revisit the committee appointments annually? Yeah. So. Do you want to it, what what is the date that the election results are certified? Is that 
Late so, in December. November. I thought it was November. Late November. November. It would be no, late November, yeah. So should we just say December to make sure that we're we're doing that soon following the election? Well, I know we do the officers, but I'm thinking the committees, we, we always do those in January. Well, I think I think we need to link the, the committee assignments to the the election because if you change a president, you change the sanitation board automatically. It makes sense to me to do it at the same time as we elect officers. But when, when do we elect officers? The first meeting in December. Right? First meeting in December. The certification of the election. How about what if we said committee assignments and district appointments uh, shall be uh, conducted? Uh, along with the appointment, at the same time as the appointment of district officers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Is, is that working? Yeah. Will we'll be. Will be. Sure. Sorry. sorry. No. So, and, um, and the second sentence I would propose that we say, for good cause, comma, upon a motion and majority vote, in the rest of the sentence. I would object to good cause because it doesn't have a definition. What I might think is a good cause, you would think was not a good cause, and so you just, it's the same, it, it doesn't do anything to the same Mr. political Lee, issues. Can you suggest some language that we could put without giving specific examples that would cover good cause? Um. Or, or do you think that's sufficient, Is because it's just indicating that some cause needs to be stated, and then the court can discuss whether it's good cause or not. Well, that's, uh, it's difficult without a definition of what good cause is. I think that, that's... We just say for cause, that there has to be some reason, it's not completely discretionary? Well, it, the committee, um, the, the selection of committee assignments has been done traditionally by our board, just by a majority vote. Um, and it's been that way as long as I've been part of the district. It's been kind of a, generally people, the, the directors are asking for particular assignments and some don't want them and they kind of right, juggle right, it around. We're just talking about when it's brought back for reconsideration, that there needs to be some cause. Preferably a good cause, but at least some cause stated. I, I think that um, the way I interpret good cause cause that's like not going to be, you know, retaliation, discrimination, um, but I don't know. So a good cause would suffice for my, for me, because I just don't, I don't like the fact that if someone is, you know, blackballed or whatever, it is, the majority, sometimes it, Majority of, of, of the individuals on the board could be on a particular side and not give any reason. I think there should be a reason, and I'm not sure about the word if it could cause it suffice. How about with the stated reason? I mean, somebody can't just target somebody else without saying in public why they're doing it. If, you, if you're looking at it from a political standpoint. Use your suggestion is upon a stated reason. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's I, I still like to use for cause, because that, that there's some, and that, that implies there's a reason. We're not saying that it's a good reason, but we're saying that there's a reason. There's some cause for bringing the reconsideration. Or with stated cause. Um, I think it goes with us, but I think this is I, I think it still has to go to a majority vote, um, so I'm, I have to I'm not saying that we remove any of the yeah. other language. I'm just saying add at the very beginning of the sentence, second sentence, for cause, upon a motion and majority vote, committee assignments and appointments may be reconsidered. Uh, do I just foresee trouble as then arguments as to what cause? is or not, whereas if someone states a reason, um, could be viewed as a good cause or not, I just, I'd hate to put you in a 
your board or paint your boards in the corner as far as yeah, cause I don't think is definable. I mean, it's not specific. It's a it's a right. That would be. I mean, that's, that's my concern is the word. If we can find another word. That, Forcing somebody who is bringing the issue to the table to give a reason why they're bringing the issue to the table, then gives five people the opportunity to either agree or disagree. And because you, you, you have to say, I mean, you can't just say, I want you off a committee because I don't like you, or I want you off of a committee and not bring a reason. That was okay. Me. So, uh, if if we revise this to upon a stated reason, uh, that's awkward. upon a stated reason and a motion and majority vote, committee assignments and appointments may be considered at any time during the calendar year. During the year. That's the best I can get. I'll take it. I, I well, don't know. I'm list. for discussion. Anyone else? No. Necessary that you have five people deciding. I mean, I, I don't think it's necessary either because the whole truth is that you put five people here and somebody's going to challenge somebody to explain or, or if I'm being targeted, I'm going to say to you, tell me why. Explain to me why. Except it hasn't been explained in that present case. But it hasn't come up yet. <clears throat> Personally, uh, <clears throat> I have my committees, but you know, I'm open always to moving or changing committees. I'm not wedded to any particular one. Um, I attended sanitation meetings for years. I mean, I could, I could be on that, I could, choose, I could be on the fire, I'm on water. Um, I, I think that we all serve at the pleasure of each other. And I'm just open to that idea. I mean, I think it's really good to continue with experience. But um, I, I just see that, you know, we're all here to serve the community in, over, in what way we can. So if somebody wants me off of a committee, then that's fine with me. Okay, so just as a point of clarification, right now, the way that this is uh, revised as modified by Director of Global was that committee assignment and district appointments will be coordinated um, with the election of district officers annually. Upon a motion and majority vote, committee assignments and appointments may be reconsidered at any time during the calendar year. That's what I have currently down. I'd still like to have uh for cause or for a stated reason in the second sentence. So would I. <coughs> I'm going to support um, attorney position. I'm, I'm sorry, could you say that again, Director Gibson? I can you, you. you mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not taking a position on it, but you're, you're yes. supporting the way I read it. Yes, correct. Could you read it again, please, Mr. Mayor? Okay. <laughs> Committee assignments and district appointments will be coordinated with the election of district officers annually. <laughs> On a motion and a majority vote, committee assignments and appointments may be reconsidered at any time during the calendar year. Yeah, let's just leave it that way. I can't, I can't see where any change is going to make any difference. The change that I'm proposing says that there needs to be a reason given for reconsideration. But wouldn't that happen after? Naturally. It would come up. But it didn't happen in the instant case. We haven't got to. Yes. No, it didn't happen at the last regular meeting when you asked to put on the future agenda reconsideration of committee assignments. You stated no reason. Okay. We, uh, we're still all, well, most of us are in the dark about that. Okay, so I think we're ready to Did you take public comment on this? Did we take public comment on it? We did. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I make a motion. I make a motion we approve the the uh, revision as amended by Attorney Jeff Mary. A second. Okay. 
Okay, roll call, please. Director Gibson? Yes. Director Via? No. Director Plobo? No. Vice President White? Yes. President Austin? Yes. Okay, so now we'll move on to our next item. Consideration of appointment for 2019 committee assignments, appointments to the Five Cities Fire Authority. I'm sorry, you got, I believe you, you skipped got, six B. Uh, speak up. Speaking of the mic. I, I believe you skipped item six B. Six B. Yes. Agenda to reconsider the appointment. This, this would be um, President uh, Austin. This is essentially uh, based on Director Replogle's concerns about the last. Um, at the last meeting where Director White made a motion uh, to, to reconsider okay. the appointment. Item 6B, reconsideration of the motion made January 23rd to agendize an item for the reconsideration of the 2019 committee appointments. I make a motion that we, rec we, put, that we reconsider the 2018 committee appointments. 2019. 2019 committee appointments. Are, are you willing to state a reason for this motion? No. Not until we get to it. How do you know it's not me resigning from the fire board? You're to it. No, I'm not All to right. it. We don't need it. it. Please. We need a second. Miss White has <laughs> made a motion. Did you want it to? Take public, public comment, comment first. first. Well, we got or do you want to take a second to the motion? Second on the motion. Yes. Second on the motion. Then we'll take public comment. Thank you. Do we have a second on the motion? Could Could I hear that again? Motion, please. We have a reconsideration. Oh, Vice President White made a motion to reconsider the motion made on January twenty third, the night January twenty third, to agendaize the item for reconsideration of the two thousand nineteen committee. I'll second. Okay. Okay. Roll call. Public no. Comment. Public comment. Julie Jagger, <coughs> in my experience, the motion is taken after the public <coughs> speaks to the item. But you're going to do it this way, and I would recommend a no vote. Um, the committee assignments were made. There has been no reasons given as to why you would need to agendize this um, or make any changes. Then, if there are reasons to agendize this, there's no reason that it couldn't have been taken up at a regular meeting. And that's what I would ask you to do, is agendize it for a future agenda of your regular board meetings. Thank you. Any other public comment? Charles Varney. I feel like I'm a little bit in the twilight zone here. Um, I really need to hear a reason for doing this in order to form an opinion about it. So it seems a little catch-22 that I can't hear a reason until you prove it, and then I get to hear your reason. How can I make public comment if I don't know your reasons? President Austin, this is just a motion to um, put the item on the agenda for consideration. This is not a motion. It's just to put it on an agenda, either at a special meeting or a regular meeting at your board's direction. Jeff, what's on this agenda? If it, go ahead. So if your board if your board approves putting it on the agenda, you have it here for your consideration today or on a different meeting or at another special meeting or at a regular meeting. But first you need we're, to take what we're doing vote. is redoing the vote we did yes. at the last meeting because yes. there was a question about yes. it not being a it should have been a roll call vote. So we want so that that's right. Everybody was no, who voted what, and it would be a part of the minutes. Yes. Mary Lou Cianciano, I'm gagging. <coughs> Any other public okay. comment? Okay, I'll call for the vote. Call for the vote, then. Um, 
that you might lose any position at the sanitation district through any votes. I don't get it. While Mr. Minnery earlier said that the board, that the representative at the, at the um, sanitation district represents this district and somehow is guided by your board as a whole, I have not seen that. I've seen unilateral decisions being made by the president of the Oceano CSD over many years. Only a few times have I seen where the president comes back to the board and asks for some direction. Perhaps there's something that they need uh, further advice from the rest of you from. In the case of the Roy Grande, uh, for the fire authority, if there's an expense over $10,000 that would affect Arroyo Grande, their representative goes back and asks the council for direction for a vote in the subsequent items. I'm speaking to the policies and the procedures of some of these committees that Excuse we're talking about here. There's a question raised in, in your audience. So the staff report needs to be beefed up with better information so that we can come to the informed and make a comment that the night that you, and I hope it is a, a night meeting, a regular meeting, we can comment fully informed and that there's not this guessing game going on. Thank you very much. Uh, as, just a moment, as, as a point of, point of order, I think, yeah. point of order, um, I believe the last motion that was made regarding uh, agenda item 6B, you clarified that that was to bring this item, reconsideration of the committee appointments, uh, to this meeting. Right. Is that correct? I, I did clarify that and then... So, so, so we passed a motion agendizing this item for consideration at this meeting Aren't we obligated to follow through on that motion and commit, consider it at this meeting? When it came up at this meeting, then uh, Vice President White made a motion to continue it to a regular meeting so that AGP could be there. So that but is that, appropriate. Isn't that contrary to the yeah. motion that was just passed and that you clarified it would be this meeting and not the next meeting? I, I think it did come up in discussion and the discussion led to Vice President White's continuing it to the regular meeting. So I think that is... I understand your point, but procedurally, I think we're, we're fine. I think that you gave like three choices. So it could be this meeting or the next meeting or a special meeting. Maybe you gave four choices. I, I, I don't see any procedural problem with continuing it if it's your board's pleasure to do so. All right, so public comment. Thank you, Board. Uh, my name is Jeff Edwards, and I'd like to direct your attention to your 2019 <coughs> committee and subject matter assignments. It's page eight of eight. And since this discussion is largely about the sanitation district, I'd, I'd like you to refer you to the upper right-hand column where it talks about what's the subject matter for the sanitation district. And I would submit to you that reclaimed water is not what the sanitation district is about. They collect wastewater and they treat the wastewater. It's a wastewater treatment facility. Now, Pismo Beach Point has, of order. Pismo this Beach is, has grand flags. Irrelevant. Does this have anything to do with the agenda? The, excuse excuse me. I have under consideration is continuing. Madam Chair, will you please stop my time? Wait, and, until you can create the audience. Excuse me, Mr. President Austin. The, the, the matter before your board is whether or not, the motion before your board is whether or not to continue this item. Okay, then you're not, we're talking about continuing the item, not... A, but the subject not, matter is, under 6C, a replacement. We're talking about... It's reconsideration of me, appointment. You must take public comment on 6C. It's that simple. I'm providing public comment on 6C. I would take public comment, and then do you have a motion? Take public comment, do you have a motion? And I'd like you to start my time over, please, due to the interruption of this very rude individual. Thank you. Oh, let's bring him up. Thank you. So, we'll, we'll, we'll start again. And I, I was discussing what, what the subject matter for the Sand District is. And it's about wastewater. And I find it almost Freudian 
that reclaimed water is actually in the, in the box. And when we talk about reclaimed water at the sanitation district, we're talking about <laughs> Central Coast Blue. Let's not equivocate. Central Coast Blue was a, a project for and by the city of Pismo Beach. And unfortunately, at the Pismo Beach City Council meeting, I believe it was the 15th of January, uh, Director Rapogel made comments. In fact, she actually posed questions to the City Council of Pismo Beach, asking questions about the project so that not only she, but the entire community of Oceano could be more well informed leading up to decision making about Central Coast Blue. And I can tell you, uh, I don't know exactly, but my guess is Ben Fine, the Public Works Director for the City of Pismo Beach, had Pavo on speed dial and got Pavo on the phone and said, Pavo, you need to get your folks lined up because they've run, they're running afoul. And I can tell you, and I can almost guess, that Mayor Wabi called your own President Austin with, with a little phone call and said, hey, um, you guys aren't falling into line. So my question is this, when is Oceano going to get real representation? Not from Daddy Pismo Beach, not from Ben Fine, not from Pavo, not from Eric Howell, not from Mary Lucy, certainly, or not from Halcyon either. So thank you very much. You forgot that. That was great. <laughs> that was good. Um, so I, can I ask your legal counsel to restate the motion? That's on the floor that the public is commenting on. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Will the gentleman in the back please be quiet? President White moved to continue this item at the next regular board meeting with AG Pre AGP President and Director Gibson seconded. So I'd like to speak against the motion to table it. I would, um, as long, and I understand being in the dark, um, I, 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 I too am guessing who's representing who at what meetings. You know, um, so uh, I, I have gotten several calls um, asking me, do you, do you have somebody who doesn't understand working in coalition working together on your board and I always have to stay and I'm not on the board anymore you know and so it, it appears that it needs to be discussed whose agenda are you running are you running a, a nonprofit's agenda are you are you running you know another agenda coming out of Los Osos because you're supposed to be running Oceano's agenda so the sooner we get to the issue of talking about what our agenda is, the better. So, um, you know, whether you need, because I don't want to get another call that says you have a rogue board member. That, that's not working in collaboration. You have to work together. It doesn't work if you don't work together. And seeing these three, two splits are, it, it, it's not a good place to be. So, um, I, I would like to see you guys move forward, take lunch, you know, surely get a nap. information, get some answers about why this issue has come up. Um, we're here in good faith. Um, I'd like to see this discussion um, at least start today. I'd like to hear the reasons why they've come up. And as Vice President White has said, it can be continued to the next regular meeting. And I think that, uh, but to get it out right now would be very important to inform discussion at the next meeting. I would like to say that I do 
not have a problem with continuing this item to the next meeting. That was what I have been proposing from the start for all of the items on this agenda. However, I do object to the continued secrecy about the reason for reconsidering the committee assignments, and I would ask that Director White please answer the question as to why. I don't have to, but I would be happy to. I mean, if, if that's here it is. Vice President White, there's no requirement that you have to, but it's up to you and your discretion. Um, and uh, Vice President Austin, that we confirmed that public um, comment has ended. Public comment? Any more public comment? Seeing none. Thank you. Public comment has ended. You have stated you want to. I mean, I'm not going to that meeting. Yeah. We have a second. I. Any further discussion? Uh, yeah. I'm. I, I'm happy to explain it. I have a concern that, okay, let's just say that many, not many, but several years ago, the community of Oceana, through the 218 process that they didn't object to, approved a redundancy program for the sanitation board, and a Roy Gray <coughs> over Beach did the same. This board supported that. This board has continued to support the redundancy program. That's part of what we've been doing for years and years. And then we have a board member who comes into the community and then joins this board, happy to have her, and immediately begins to speak in opposition to the redundancy program. So her primary fiduciary duty is supposed to be to this board, but she continues to speak in opposition to that. And then, prior to being on the board, this board was, after Pismo Beach, the first board to support uh, the water reclaim program of Central Coast Blue because we realized the value that that could give to the water basin of which we are a part, of which we draw our water, and the longer the water litigation, the whole water picture, which is very broad and includes lots of different things. And we, we as a board supported that. It was unanimous on both of those things, I believe. <coughs> yeah, it serves me right. And then we have a board member who begins publicly, very loudly, very publicly, online, at other meetings, to speak against that. So we have a board of directors who has made decisions supporting the community. And we have a board member that comes and speaks against all these things. So her primary duty is to be here. I am not objecting to her right to speak because she certainly has a right to speak. But she also has a fiduciary duty to Oceano and to the Oceano community and to this board, which I, will, I feel she is not following that fiduciary duty. And so my reaction is to then ask this board to consider in public whether she should serve on the two boards that she is serving <coughs> that represent Central Coast Blue and the Sanitation uh, Expansion Program. So there's, that's my reason. You have mischaracterized my public comments. In public comments that I made, questions that I raised, questions that needed to be asked about the redundancy project and Central Coast Blue, those were done as a resident of Oceano, specifically on behalf of the Oceano Beach Community Association and the association's stated positions. I do not cease to be a resident of Oceano nor president of the community association by virtue of serving on this board, and I did make it very clear when I was giving public comments that I was not speaking on behalf of this board. You are suggesting that I do not, that you do not believe I have the integrity to represent the positions of this board, the official positions, and follow the direction of this board on the committees on which I serve, and I find that offensive. I, I am a public servant. I represent the people of Oceano. If the majority on this board gives me direction as to the board's position on a committee that I represent, then that is the position that I take.
whether it's in conformance with my own personal views or not. I'm not gonna stop asking hard questions, however, and I think that's imperative on me as a representative of Oceano to serve the best interests of the community, the best interests of the environment that we all live in. And I'm, I'm very disappointed that the board will not allow someone whose views are not in conformity with the majority and with past positions of the board to continue to serve and to continue to represent the interests of the community on those committees. Well, I don't think the board has made that decision. <clears throat> That's where we're heading. Well, I don't, I don't know that. I'm bringing it up for discussion. President Austin, was, yes. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to cut off the directors, but I, you I, have I, a motion to continue this matter, and so I, I, I understand that both Director White and Director Robledo wanted to say what they had to say about it, but we're not really considering it at this I know. moment. Yeah, we can just, there's a motion and a second to just continue it. Regarding the motion, I would prefer that we continue with this, this discussion at this meeting. I support that. Oh, not at this meeting, no, because it's new. Well, we have a motion, we have a motion and a second to continue the matter to the next regular meeting, so. Call for the motion. This is call for the question. Call for the question. Thank you. Roll call. Director Gibson? Yes. Director Villa? Yes. Director Plogel? No. Uh, Vice President Austin? I'm sorry, Vice President White? Yes. And then President Austin? Yes. So, can we make board comments? Um, There's the, the, been a motion to continue it, so. Mr. Evans. Continue it. Um, okay. Well, yeah, well, if, um, if Shirley would like to comment, I think it's appropriate. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I think where there's a lot of confusion is that, um, you know, <clears throat> having been myself on both sides, having been an advocate in, in the audience and then being on the board, is that it's really hard to uh, do both of those things at once because it really confuses people. And so I know because <clears throat> of the PISMA meeting, the next couple water meetings that I attended, I'm, I'm on various water committees, and um, I was questioned by other members, and they weren't just from Pismo Beach, because they did not understand that your position was separate from ours. I'm sorry. I, yeah, excuse me. I she's don't speaking. Believe you need to let her speak. Yes, but point of order. Excuse point me. of order. She's speaking. Can we have this discussion? I, I, this I, Cynthia is speaking. You were. I mean, she was speaking. You had yours. I think. I think it's most appropriate uh, if if the matter has been continued that we don't just continue speaking. I'm sorry, I don't need to interrupt any of the board members. <coughs> but I just think it's well, she certainly hasn't been able to talk, and everyone else has, and I thought it would be a I'm gonna go home and cough anyway. I make a push and we adjourn because we need to use it. There's been a motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. And a roll call vote. <laughs> Oh, no, no. Director Gibson? Yes. Director Villa? Yes. Director Plogel? Yes. 